Hey, Sean here for the Rusty Shovel, and what I wanted to do is shoot a little bit of video um, to be able to show you guys some of the cool projects that Jesse works on. So, um, Jesse's our landscape designer, and we don't see him very often because he's in a lot of people's <laughs> yards instead of hanging out with us at the shop, which is where he needs to be. But that story doesn't get told as to the funny things that are going on in his head <laughs> and what those actually turn into. So, what I want to do is be able to give you guys a little bit of a tour around a few different projects. That Jesse's worked on um, that we've supplied product into um, or even just projects that we like to be able to showcase some awesome landscapes because ultimately that's what our purpose is is to create awesome landscapes and beautify this lovely province of ours so um, where we're gonna start is the easiest place to start which is at <laughs> Jesse and Yonica's place uh, we're gonna start in the front yard so um, I'm gonna get Jesse to just give us a little bit of a tour through the front yard go through a little bit of our uh, the vision um, what was kind of some of the some of the things that uh, you like, some of the things maybe you do a little bit differently, um, some of the thought process that went into it. So. When Yannick and I got this place, it was realistically just about three feet deep of rock and nobody could see the forest through the trees. <laughs> she questioned what I was thinking out front a couple times, but it was really closed off and shrubbed in everywhere. So you had no curb appeal. You couldn't really see the house. So that was a big, faux pas in my opinion because we want it to be really inviting when we have guests and we're in a small town so we don't care if a neighbor just comes by and walks right into the yard so a big part of it was opening it up and so the the main thing that I see in a lot of your designs is like we're, we're trying to try and draw the eye to something right and so in in this case you talked about wanting to have the front door being a, being a welcoming place and so um, we've got the path here um, maybe talk a little bit about that yeah so with this path, um, what we wanted on this one was something that was a little bit wider, uh, so two people could walk on it, so we went okay. for about four feet. Uh, and then we both really like natural stone, so we went with our autumn flame flagstone. Yep. And why that was important to us is because it's very vibrant in terms of color, and it's something you don't see every day. Lots of people, they just, they aren't there thinking about it yet. So this is a chance to showcase something different and just highlight a natural product. Uh, and it, I just think it really sets the color base for the yard and looks really natural. Um, some of the challenges with working with this, I know oh, yeah. um, it's thicker um, mm -hmm. and and it kind of tapers out at the edge, so it doesn't get super tight. So you have to no. be comfortable with the joints and it's not, this product in particular, you can get flagstone that's cut to a certain depth, but Absolutely. this stuff isn't, right? Yeah, so this isn't a regular, they call it a patio grade flagstone, which just means it's kind of that two to two and a half inch thick. Um, it's an irregular depth, so because it's natural, you get lots of different topography. So when we laid this, we knew full well we were gonna have uh, not a perfectly smooth path to walk on. And that was okay because this isn't our main entrance. Yannick and I, when we come to the house, we often go through the garage. Um, so this is when we're going out for a walk or we just have a guest coming over. So it's not like, the only path into the house. It's a, a bit of a showpiece path and it's still functional. We can go across it really well. I can sweep it and shovel it in the, in the winter and it's just fine. But it's definitely something to consider. Uh, just that it's a it's an irregular shaped stone. Right. Yeah, for sure. So I'll touch on the maintenance thing real quick, which is it it's about 20 minutes with a leaf floor a week. That, that's about all we do. And the choice for artificial turf is because we've got two really big mature evergreen trees in our front yard. Um, and if you know anything about evergreens, they're going to kill anything underneath it. That's just the acidity coming from the needles and they're trying to outcompete any grass. Uh, so us trying to get any green down was just going to be a losing battle over the long term. So then we thought, well, artificial turf is A, good because it ain't going to die out on us. Yeah. Uh, and the second part was just from a maintenance level. So although I have a background in horticulture and I went to school for it and I absolutely love plants, the problem was we're both super busy in the summer and we don't have time to take care of a ton of plants, let alone water a lawn to make it look healthy. And part for me about that is color, right? Like just because you want a low maintenance front yard doesn't mean that you have to have uh, just rock spread everywhere, right? Or, or dead grass or some <laughs> plant, you know, plantings. Like there's there's purpose to this, there's function to it. Like you can, you know, you can kick off your flip flops and, and walk around in here bare, bare feet. That's that's no problem, but yep. it, it at least, like it makes you feel good when you got some green grass. Yeah, like absolutely. So, so yeah, what do we got going on? So water feature, so this is an aquascape water feature. We got uh, medium stacks later and two small stacks later and, and 
two spillway bolts. Uh, so this is on a 15 by 15 foot bottomless aqua, bay, aqua, aqua block system. Um, and it's recessed in the ground because what we wanted was, you'll see a little bit of pooling water in spots, but we wanted the ability, if we wanted to overfill it and have some of the rocks submerged, we have the choice. Right. We don't need to, and we don't always do it, but the choice is there. And I mean, the, the, other, the other thing that I like about this feature is like, you know, we always talk about lighting and lighting is the, you know, the, the last piece that gets done in the yard, yes. but it's not finished until it gets done in the yard. And, and part of that is creating something that can be lit, right? So yeah. without this here, you don't have that focal point that you can really light up, right? Yeah, and said from the start, you're creating focal points. Uh, you, you mentioned that and definitely if you are creating a focal point, you want to light it up, and if you don't have a focal point, get one because you're going to want lights. Like this guy's got over six spotlights, it's got three fountain lights in it alone, so it you can see it happening a little ways away, and that's what we wanted. But it, it's also really cool because the thing you don't think about uh, with lighting, everybody thinks about directional spotlighting here, is you actually see it on the house way before yeah. because we've angled the lights a little bit to just glance at some of the areas. So when the water is flickering, you get this rippling effect on the wall, which is lighting from a submerged spot. So it looks like the house is dancing with light at night. Yeah. Like you, like at night, this place looks really good, but it's not like you've really overdone it. Like what do we got for path lights here? One, two, three, four. Four path lights. Four path lights. Yeah. Five path lights. Yeah, I guess um, down the stair there. You know, and then up lighting on three trees, and then the water feature, obviously. So like yep. it's not. And then we've got some deck lighting as well, but I mean that's more functional, so you can see the yeah edge of the, to find, of the deck. see the edge of the deck because we didn't want to have a railing. We're under coat. <laughs> what was here before the front step? But yeah, thing this this deck to the side wasn't wasn't here. No, for sure. So originally there was just a straight shot of a deck over here and a couple rickety steps down, um, and it didn't really do anything for us. We're in a small town, like I said, and we really like being out front and talking to people. So when we knew we were doing a water feature, we wanted to sit beside it. It was the epiphany to have this whole addition um, for us to be able to sit here. You'll see, it's not a real deep deck. Uh, and that was part of our planning process was that we only wanted one-sided seating. We weren't looking for a 10 or 12 foot deep deck because we didn't want to chew into the yard. And this is only really for us to just sit here and if we're having, we were waiting for someone to come over just sitting at the front of the house. But the other thing is too is this was phased over two and a half summers. Um, the first thing we did was rip out the yard and build the water feature because I couldn't wait. <laughs> And then, uh, and then came a bunch of the, the artificial turf and the deck and all the rock and then adding pots and stuff over time. So, you know, you have to be okay with living in a little bit of a state of chaos because there's dirt and pressure dust and your, your fills everywhere, but we still got the yard we wanted, still the, year, the yard we were dreaming of having. It just took us a little bit longer and that's okay. Yeah. So we knew the driveway was a little bit shallow for us in terms of in terms of width uh, from the get-go and we wanted more room so you could get in and out of a vehicle comfortably like two vehicles parked side by side and you know be able to walk out and not be walking off the driveway all the time so we actually took back about another six feet of driveway but there's a bit of an elevation change here so that meant building a retaining wall system right i just thought you know, it really created a little bit of a nice look for us when we drove up because we have the wall lighting in here. So you drive up and this is all lit up beside us. And then there's a nice little Oakville, our autumn flame landing at the bottom to tie the top into the lower part. And then what actually a problem solution here is there's, they planted an elm tree way too close to the house. Right. And there's a giant stump in there, but the gas line goes right under there. Right. So they couldn't rip it out. So at first we were upset because we wanted to shave this whole portion back but what it did was it allowed us an opportunity to build a raised portion to have more show pieces so then we filled it with some statuary and and large plants and it actually helped draw the yard into the garage a little bit as well cool well hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight into you know what goes into the design process it's not just hey, we found a picture on Pinterest and let's, <laughs> no. uh, let's make that. So there's obviously some considerations yep. that, uh, that we help people through and, and uh, um, you know, everything from like, uh, I found it fascinating, just like the plant 
choices on, hey, we want something that's going to have a canopy higher up so we can see the water feature as we pull up. Like, I mean, that's things that, you know, <laughs> unless, most, unless you're thinking about it all the time yeah. for, for a living, like that's not something that's going to be like, oh yeah, that's smart. We should, we should have done that. You for, know? Sh for sure. So, I find a, a big thing is people often, they don't, they can't think of the whole picture because that's not what they do every day. That's what, that's all we do. Think about landscaping and think about the best way to utilize the space and then think about all those little nuances where you want privacy and don't want privacy and how much maintenance you want, how much you like the garden, do you want wild factor? Like that's all we live and breathe. So I just, I just think it's just uh, such an opportunity when we can work with a homeowner and really bring their yard to life that is custom to them and really hits all their wants. Cool. Well, that's uh, that's been Jesse and Yannicka's yard, and uh, we'll try and bring some more to you here over the summer.